Well, greetings, everybody. DW, Pastor Barry here. Hope you guys are doing well today, and I hope you're having a good week. Resurrection weekend is quickly approaching. It'll be here before we know it. Another good Friday will come and go, and then you might call it Easter. I call it Resurrection Weekend or Resurrection Day. But uh, there's also, I've been mentioning it, and we'll probably talk about it more, a lot of occult activity going on, and it seems that uh, the talk of the town as of late is uh, this eclipse that's coming up. And I know that here in Jonesboro, Arkansas, there are different places, like hotels and stuff are getting booked up with people coming to watch it. I mean, I guess it's a really big deal. I myself, you know, will I make the effort to go out and see it? If it's if it's going to be seen, if the weather is good enough, sure, I'll, I'll go see it. But I mean, I'm not going to fuss over it. But we got people traveling from all over the place to get here to get in the pathway of this eclipse. And there's also a lot of occult stuff going on around that. So the church really needs to be in prayer. And of course, we not, we are not even past the Easter slash Resurrection Weekend yet. And a lot of stuff's going on then. So be prayed up. Hopefully I'll have this video up before that time. If not, it's all right, because I have a lot of videos to edit. And I've been very busy lately, so maybe I won't get to it in time, but it is what it is. Anyway, we are doing a Derek Prince devotional here. This is October the 3rd. As always, I'm happy to, to be in um, another devotional in a new month, really kind of pushing through it. I will try to have these videos edited and up for you as quickly as I can. This one, it's called God's Restoration for His People. And it says, the declaration says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Derek Prince was very big. Him and his wife, his they're both passed away now. Derek Prince had two wives. He actually outlived them both. And his wife, Ruth, his second wife, who was more, uh, she was closer to his age. She would come up whenever he would travel the world, do his meetings. She would go with him quite often. And she would come up with him and they would make a declaration from the word of God. And declarations are good. Praying the word of God is good. Reading the Psalms, praying them over yourself. That's all good stuff. And some of the declarations that I like to make, for example, one day I might just say, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord Jesus Christ, for no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And then I'll pray other things and I'll use Bible verses. Sometimes I might say, because I seek ye first the kingdom of God and all your righteousness, Lord, all these things are added unto me. You know, things like that, because it builds up your faith. You're making a declaration from the word of God, and that's very important. And that's what this is called, declaring God's word. So declarations are good. They have a verse in Matthew chapter 6, so I thought we would go there and read. Um, it's actually from the Lord's Prayer, so let's read from verse 5. So go to Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 5, and then we'll go all the way to verse 15, just for some foundation for what this uh, devotional is saying today. The Lord's Prayer is what it's uh, headed as here in this Bible. It's red letter. And the Lord's Prayer here, it's a pattern for prayer. And recently I made a video talking about some Bible preachers and stuff who say that we don't need to pray for our needs. We don't need to pray for protection because we already have it. It's already provided. Well, if that's true, and I think to some degree it is, but if that's true, then why is, we're going to see it. When we get to it, I'll, I'll make note of it. But verse 5 in Matthew 6. It says, when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners that they may be seen by men. So these people he's speaking of wanted the praise of mankind instead of the praise of God or the reward from the Lord. Because he says, truly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, enter your closet, and when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. But when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do. You're still, you keep repeating yourself all the time. He says, don't do that. For they think that they will be heard for their much speaking or for their many words, right? Do not be like them. For your father knows what things you have need of before you ask him. That's why you don't need to keep 
repeating the same prayer. God, I need this. God, I need this. God, I need this. He already knows what you need. You just ask once in faith and you stand on it until it comes to pass. Therefore, pray in this manner. He's saying, pray like this. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. See, praying for your needs for the day. Jesus said to pray that way. So these people saying we don't need to pray for our needs because we already have them. That's contrary to what Jesus said. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. See, daily repentance. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive men their sins, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men for their sins, neither will your heavenly Father or will your Father forgive you your sins. So I think that's pretty good foundation for what we're going to take a look at, but we're focusing mainly right now on Jerusalem and God's people. So Derek Prince says, the call to pray for Jerusalem is directed at everyone who accepts the Bible as God's authoritative word. God requires all of his people from every nation and every background to be con to be concerned about the peace of one particular city, Jerusalem. There is a practical reason for this. God's purpose for this age will climax in the establishment of his kingdom. Each time we pray for the pray the familiar words, thy kingdom come, we are aligning ourselves with this purpose. See, for example, Matthew 6, 10. And that, that's what we just read in the Lord's Prayer. We must remember, however, that the prayer continues, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Verse 610, that's King James Version. It is on earth that God's kingdom is to be established. His kingdom is invisible as yet to human eyes, but it is not vague or amorphous. Or amorphous. I don't even know that word. A M O R P H O U S. Never heard that before. It will ultimately have a tangible earthly realization. The capital and center of God's kingdom on earth will be the city of Jerusalem. The administration of righteous government will go forth from Jerusalem to all nations on earth. In response, the gifts and worships of these nations will flow back to Jerusalem. Thus, the peace and prosperity of all nations depend on that of Jerusalem. Until Jerusalem enters into her peace... No nation on earth can know true, lasting peace. To all who heed God's call to love Jerusalem and pray for her peace, God gives a special, precious promise. They shall prosper. Psalm 122, verse 6. The word translated prosper goes beyond the material realm. It denotes a deep inner well-being, a freedom from care and anxiety. As we align ourselves with God's plan by praying for Jerusalem, we experience a foretaste of his peace. A sense of inner rest and peace comes to those who, in the midst of all turmoil of this world, associate themselves actively with God's plans to restore his people. I know that was, for Derek Prince, that was a rather deep one today. Maybe you got something out of it. Uh, it's got a prayer at the bottom. It says, Thank you, Lord, for the blessing you promised to those who love Israel. An inner peace comes to me as I pray for God's purposes of restoration for his people. I pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. In Jesus Christ's name, amen and amen. Pray for God's nation, Israel, and pray for his church. Those are very important things, things I believe we are commanded to do. I mean, why not? I mean, recently I was talking to somebody about it. You know, the nation of Israel as a whole did not accept Jesus as their Messiah. They're still waiting for one. And there's a lot of talk in the news right now about these red heifers that came from Texas that were flown over to Israel that are going to be sacrificed very soon. Some of them anyway. So pay attention to that because it's associated with the third temple being built. It's not completed yet, but they're working on certain things. Guys, we are so close to the end time. We are in the end times, but we're so close to so many end time events. That's what I'm trying to say. So we need to be in prayer. We need to be covered because don't forget the devil knows his time is short. So there is a lot going on. 
Pray for Israel, pray for the church, and certainly pray for yourself to be covered. God bless you guys. Hope you're having a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next Derek Prince devotional.